All right, following the developments in Canada right now and whether uh, we're alone uh, so far with the other of our six closest economic friends on the planet not wanting anything to do with us because they uh, say that we don't want anything to do with them. But if you're in the middle of that and seeing that play out on the global stage, you all of a sudden get worried and say, you know what, this is not the time to be in stocks. Uh, to, to my friend uh, Jack Otter, who says, you know, be careful about taking that view. Uh, he's an uh, associate publisher uh, at Barron's, Jack Otter. Jack, your view is uh, be careful about getting caught up in the, in the headlines, right? Yeah, not much more than that. In totally, utterly ignore the headlines. Think back in history to all the times when anyone could have sat there and said, oh, this is a terrible time to be invested in stocks, right? You know, 2008, when all heck was breaking loose, of course, that was a fantastic time to be invested, to, buy, to be buying sure. stocks. But we just simply can't time it. Uh, so don't try. This is long-term money. I mean, really, Warren Buffett, yeah, he's a good investor, but what's the smartest thing he ever did? was not selling. Yeah. You know, uh, it, time is on your side. Sure, if, you, if you're retiring next year, if you need money next year, that money should be in cash now. But don't think about, right, you know, Obama hated America, was going to destroy capitalism. If you sold when he was elected, bad move. Remember when Trump was elected, you know, people hit that sell you, trigger. You chase it, you chase it. And, I, and that didn't work either. So One thing I learned a lot from my Italian dad, he said, Neil, whatever you do, no matter where you go, put the same amount of money into this market month in and month out. Great uh, advice. As long as you live. And he was advising me of that as a teenager, in fact, would help me along the way. And I have stuck to that every single month of my life since, and I'm only 33 years old. Wow. Huh, you must have a very tough job. I guess I did. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, I think you're right about that. Just calm down and go long term, and, and it will it'll still be your trend and, yeah. and friend. Um, let's talk a little bit about what's going on, though. A lot of people don't know this, or they don't know enough about what they'll need in future years. But lo and behold, and I, I read in, in your sister publication, The Wall Street Journal, that net worth has just passed $100 trillion. A lot of that buoyed by market gains, a lot of it by real estate. So those same people might be saying, well, I don't need to listen that close, right? <laughs> you see, the problem is six people have 99 trillion of that. Right, exactly. You know, the rest of us That's are exactly splitting right. it. Uh, look, there are a lot of people who are very unprepared for retirement. Uh, Larry Fink just recently said to us that will become the number one crisis in America if something doesn't happen. Larry Fink, the CEO right, of BlackRock. Right. And he didn't just say it to us. He's been saying it a lot. Um, this is a very big issue. I don't think people should get hung up on the fact that they don't know their exact number. Nobody knows their exact number. Number. It's, when you it's, say it's, the exact number, what are you referring to? Is well, so there's this study that came out yesterday, I think, from Bankrate that said some huge percentage of Americans don't know how much they'll need in retirement. Well, neither do I, right? Um, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a guess. I would look at your fixed costs. If you have a mortgage, you know, you might be able to uh, guess what your doctor's bills might be, and if there are no surprises, obviously. You know, you can make some estimates. If you can't pay your property taxes if you're retired, well, then probably time to move. Right. But, but for the most part, you don't know for sure. Um, and I but, know a lot of people are smarter than you think, though. I mean, it, they know what their expenses are now. They're hoping exactly. and praying they won't be as high in retirement. A lot of times they are pretty high. Yeah. But they have a much more of a rough idea than people give them credit yeah. for. And here's one way to look at it that I think some people miss is don't look at that number and think, oh, I'm going to take a little bit out every year and hope that it outlives me. Uh, right. Think of it instead as a source of income. So the general rule of thumb is you can withdraw 4% going up with inflation, 4% of your nest egg, and it probably won't, you probably won't outlast it. So the average person in this bank rate uh, survey said uh, they would need $650,000 to retire. Well, that's $26,000 a year of income on top of your Social Security and everything else. So that's how you should be looking at it. Is 26 plus Social Security and pensions or whatever enough? If not, then you need more than six hundred. So people are looking at assets that suddenly are appreciating, and they're looking at the 401k and say, ooh, wow, or they're looking at the value of their house or that their neighbor's house just sold for, you know, a pretty good chunk of change when they, it was so depressed a, a decade ago. Don't go by that, right? Well, you can go by that to a certain extent, but in, look at it as a source of future income rather than looking at it as just uh, money you can grab any time you want it. But the rule of thumb, real quickly, uh, long-term long trend is your friend. Whatever you're going to put in, dollar cost average, but stick to it. That's it.
That's a fairly reliable strategy. Absolutely, yes. Very, very important. And don't ever say this isn't the right time to invest in the market yeah. because you don't know. And when it feels awful, it's probably the best. And one more thing that people don't think about is their human capital. So really, the most important way to prepare for retirement is to keep a good, steady job. And that is not easy. And with all the disruption that's going on in all industries, mine very much so, but others too, um, you need to be thinking a step ahead. And what happens if my job disappears? Disappears. I tell young people, never ever say the words, that isn't my job. When your boss tells you to do something, do it because someday your job might go away. And if you always said yes when people gave you other assignments, that could become your future job. Yeah, I always like that. Make yourself invaluable. Exactly. You know. All right, thank you, my friend. Always good advice. Uh, Jack Otter.